pile on in here. Everybody pile on in the room. I see you, Brother Adonis. Shout out to Brother Adonis in the building. What's going on, family? Y'all come on in and let's chop this thing up like we always do. Hope you guys had a very prosperous Memorial Day weekend, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you spent time with your family. I hope you spent time with your loved ones. I hope you did some very productive and constructive things, ladies and gentlemen. And I hope that we have constructive dialogue on tonight's address. Waiting on everybody to pile on in here. A lot of folks are coming in very heavy already. First of all, I see you, T.S. Giselle. I see you. Uh, first of all, I want to thank everybody who has contributed to the new film we're doing, American Maroon. Everybody loves the trailer. We got a Kickstarter for it where people can get involved. If you go to my Twitter um, page, you can see the pinned tweet where you can go to the Kickstarter. You can see the trailer, American Maroon. Man, very thorough film. It's actually a docu-series that we're doing. So it's going to be a four-part series. It's going to be on our new streaming site. A phenomenal historic piece. Um, you got to share this with your family. This is very important for us to tell our history, to tell our stories, to control our narratives, and bring truth to power, ladies and gentlemen. A um, few things we want to touch on tonight. I want to talk about an article that I just tweeted. I just retweeted an article. They were talking about how the Democrats are losing black voters. The Democrats are losing black voters and they're acting confused. They're talking about how they got to get more aggressive with getting the black vote. The Democrats, the, the article says Democrats losing some support from black voters ahead of midterms. The Democrats are in trouble and they know that they're in trouble. And they try to act like everything was all hunky dory. And as we see, those numbers are going to come in extremely low. Black people are not rocking with them right now. And they have to come up with new con games to run on us to get us to support them. And the problem is, we're not going for no con games. For the first time in a long time in our history here, we are doing something that we have not done in a minute, which was get on code. Black people, particularly foundational black Americans, are extremely on code right now. And I keep telling people how powerful being codified is. When you're on code, that is the source of your power because you have a number of people who are on the same page and you don't have to get in a room with each other and four wall your situation to make yourself a target. Being on code means you just have the same mindset and the same aspirations as other people within your ethnic group. And we're doing that for the first time in a long time. And it, it is effective. I've been telling people, as long as we get on code, it's going to be effective. We can move the needle because when we get on code, we can move and operate as a group. And we don't have to be four walled, meaning that we don't have to have meetings here and we have to go sit up at, at the NCOBRA headquarters and we got to go sit at this office here. You don't have to do all that. Being on code yeah, the luxury to that is a code is in your head and you can't get targeted for what's in your head. If you have a meeting or if you form some little group, though, your little meetings and your groups, they can be targeted. But codification, they can't do anything about people having codification. And this is where they have problems. They have to try to infiltrate us by flooding our areas with a bunch of people who are not on code. This is why us acknowledging our FBA lineage was so important. The cultural movement of that, that helped solidify the codification. So now when there are a bunch of off-code people, usually people from the tether class of other places, when they come around trying to do their typical tethering to undermine us, we already see what it is and we call it out and we neutralize it. That's why we get so much pushback in many of these spaces from a lot of people. 
because we're so on code and because we're so effective. And again, I'm just talking about the, the tether class of some of these other places. You do have brothers and sisters from the diaspora who are actually cool and who are actually on code and we do rock with them. Let's be very clear. Whoever you are, you're a black person, you're on code, no matter where you're from, we're going to rock with you if you're on code. But now the Democrats are struggling right now because they ran out of horse crap to shovel on us. We're not going for none of it. We're not going for people of color. We're not going for minority coalition. We're not going for disenfranchised groups. We're not going for none of that. We're not going for no code words. We want something specifically done that's tangible for foundational black Americans. And enough of us are beating that drum to the point where it is effective. We have to keep up that same energy, ladies and gentlemen. Because what we're, we're dealing with now with the political structure I always tell you, politics is warfare without bloodshed. Everything is about how to undermine us, how to get black people to support the political process without actually doing something for black people. So they've made an art form out of coming up with ways to con us into going along with the program. That's really what the political stage is at this point. Different ways to con us into going along and supporting the program as we get nothing out of it. We can't roll like that no more. It's dire straits right now. We just can't roll like that. We have to get something tangible and we have to be prioritized as foundational black Americans. And we have to stop being ashamed to say we need to be prioritized. And right now, Instead of doing things like, that we asked for, like giving us reparations, they're trying to give us the run around and we're going to run around the polls and not vote. They're going to have to cough up that bread. Also, they're going to have to come up with a hate crime bill to protect us. And this is the irony. Not only do they not have a crime bill that specifically protects us, the hate crime bills that's out now are actually used against black people. Have you guys noticed that? Black people get hit with hate crime charges for every little thing. There was a brother, I posted a story earlier. There's a brother down in Florida. They said he shot a gun at his Latino neighbors. No telling what they did to him. They always leave that out. They always make the black person the aggressor. Let's be very clear. Black people generally don't target these other groups just indiscriminately. There's usually, if it's a genuine beef or a genuine situation, usually that other group did something slick, they instigated it, and then we reacted, and then they start acting funny style off the reaction. They do that to us all the time. Remember, when Mike Tyson had to um, put a couple of um, um, grown man hands on the little goofy white boy on the airplane, they made Mike Tyson the aggressor. At first, remember, they were talking about Mike Tyson brutalized a passenger. And they left out the fact that this white passenger was harassing Mike Tyson on the plane. He was all flicking his ears and he was doing all types of stuff. They left that out. And another speaking of airport, that other case from last week where the brother who's the ex-NFL player, the United Airlines um, employee, tried to step to this brother, put hands on him. And then the brother mopped the floor with this employee and the white media, they were running around putting the blame on the brother. In fact, the brother was the one who got arrested and he, they gave him a bogus charge. And I think they're going to probably throw the charge out because they pretty much know at this point that that United worker was the instigator. See, this thing they we're supposed to just take abuse and not get any kind of protection. But the thing is, going back to Florida, down in Florida, this brother... They said he shot a gun um, at his neighbors down there. And he said that this is what they said. The authority said, no, this is not Florida. I'm sorry. This is Louisiana. I'm sorry. This is um, Lafayette, Louisiana. So the headline says, you should not be here. Lafayette man charged with a hate crime after allegedly threatening Hispanic neighbors firing a weapon. So the hate crime comes from him saying, you shouldn't be here. He didn't use an epithet, and I don't even believe he said that, to be honest. 
this dude just said, hey, you shouldn't be here. And that's a hate crime on this brother. Keep in, keep in mind, family, the white supremacist who shot the black people in Buffalo, he's not been charged with a hate crime yet. The white supremacist who sat up here and wrote a manifesto and wrote the N-word on a gun and shot damn near a dozen black people and killed them, I don't think he's not been charged with a hate crime yet. They're, they're talking about they're going to investigate to see if there's a hate crime. So the, the standard of black people being protected by hate crime laws, they make the standard extremely high. And the standard to charge a black person for a hate crime, they make it extremely low. Just anything, if, if a black person gets into any altercation with a non-black person, they will try to find a way to make it into a hate crime. This is how corrupt law enforcement is. This is why codification is very important, family, because we, as a community, we have to start looking out for black people who get hemmed up with these racially biased laws. Now, speaking of Louisiana, remember last year there was a brother who got into an altercation with the police. The police tried to put hands on him and the brother defended himself and, 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 and neutralized the threat and got that race soldier off of him. They arrested him. I went and bailed that brother out and start banging on the damn police chief down there in Louisiana. I forgot. I think it was in Baton Rouge. And ultimately, they ended up dropping their brother's charges. That's the type of stuff that we have to do. We have to start making sure black folks who are out here trying to defend themselves from this racial tyranny, we have to make sure that they're good as a community. We got to just stop laying around and sitting around and saying, oh, my Lord, we just going to pray it away and we got to forgive. Damn that, man. We got to be very active into making sure that the community is good. Did y'all see the video I posted earlier where there was a brother? I, I don't know what city this was in, but the brother was walking down the street and there was a white man in a car parked off in the cut with binoculars and the brother confronted him. The brother was like, hey, man, what you doing over here with binoculars, man? They, oh, I'm just sitting here, dude. I'm just sitting. He said, man, there's kids over here. You up here with binoculars with kids? Get your ass off this block, homie. You need to bounce right now. The brother G checked him and made him get the hell on up out of there, as he should. We saw what happened with 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 Sambo's up here, Kakan and Kikin, with these suspected white supremacists up in Buffalo. Remember, the white supremacists in Buffalo was out there casing out the joint, and they had that big Jamaican Sambo sitting up there, chatting it up with them and not warning nobody about the dude. So that's the energy we have to be on, family. We don't have no protection from nobody, man. We're on our own, and that's okay. It's enough of us um, to handle ourselves. We have to police ourselves. We have to police our communities. We have to police our areas. And when I say our communities, the whole country is our community. So we have to make sure Black people, Black children in particular, are good. When there's racial non-justice, we have to rally around and, and make sure people are good. Now, I understand, look, in some cases, there's some people out here who have racial injustices done to them. And then when we look into their background, we see that they were flaming coons or, or um, belligerent bedwenches or bed bucks or something like that. Now, in those kind of cases, you don't have to put the cape on. We don't have to put the cape on for that. But we got to watch out for, for our people who are trying to do the right thing. Speaking of hate crimes up there in New York, there were some brothers on a train and they were putting hands on this Asian guy. And the white media got it and they were like, oh, this Asian man was attacked. Oh, this Asian man was brutally attacked. And they showed part of the video where they were kind of smacking the Asian guy around. They cut off the beginning of the video where the brothers him this asian guy up because he allegedly tried to rape a girl on a train up in new york see they didn't put it in no context they just tried to frame it as another one of these well black people are just attacking asians and they didn't put it in context the context was this dude was allegedly trying to rape a girl and the brothers they stopped it the police wasn't going to do nothing so the brothers said hey we're not going to let that happen we're not going to let you touch on no girl or try to sexually assault a girl so they step to him and put hands on him that's part of our culture foundation of black american culture we don't have an open 
pedophile culture or nothing like that. We're really the only group of people who don't have open pedophilia, meaning, and that doesn't mean that we don't have pedophiles within our community. We do, but it ain't open, meaning you can't go among us to get no damn kids. There's no place you can go where where everybody understands that's where you go in black society to go get kids. You, you know what I'm saying? In other countries, they have little setups and systems where you can go and they'll direct you to somewhere where you can go get you a kid and do whatever you want to do with a kid. All in Europe. You can do that in Europe. You can do that all in Asia. You can do that in the Caribbean, unfortunately. You can do that in parts of Africa. We've seen over there, they got sex tourism with kids over there. In the Philippines, they got it all over there. Unfortunately, they do. We, foundational black Americans, we are literally the only people who don't have that type of shit. We don't have that at all. You cannot come around us talking about you trying to get with some kids. You will get your ass toe up on site. And if you go to jail, that ass is going to get toe up again. So you got to pull all, put all of this stuff in context. Um, whenever we do things to produce justice, they'll try to make us seem like the aggressor. Um, they never make us into the heroes, even if we neutralize threats. Um, I always talk about the situation out there in Tennessee. Remember the white supremacist shot up that Waffle House with black people in it? And um, he, he tried to ambush some black folks. He thought he was going to be slick. He knew that black people were going to go to the Waffle House after the club. And he said, OK, this is where I can get a nice group of black people all at once. So this white supremacist went up in there, shot up some folks. And there was a brother who still stepped to that white supremacist, took his gun and whooped his ass and ran him on out of there. And to this day, they have not lauded that brother as a hero. Because deep down, I want you all to understand in white supremacist society, they don't mind black people getting shot up in mass by these white supremacists. I want black folks to understand this. A lot of the people in the dominant society, they have no problem with these mass shootings hitting black people. In fact, some of them laugh at it. Remember in Buffalo, when the black people got harmed, there were white people online and white Hispanics and Asians laughing at black people, laughing at the people who got killed. Now, that's something that we don't do. Black people don't do that. We especially don't laugh at children when children are being harmed or killed. We don't laugh. That's that's cowardly. But we have to understand the white supremacists and their little flunkies, their non-black flunkies, they've embraced cowardice. Cowardice has been a part of their system and their culture. And they'll accept cowardice as long as they feel like they can be in power. And that cowardice is turned around and backfired on them because, again, when you reward cowardice, especially in law enforcement, you get a situation like you got down there in Texas. A bunch of cowards who are afraid to go in there and neutralize a real threat. You understand? Well, let's get some folks in here. Let me get some people in here. Now, gee, oh Lord, let me let me see what T.S. Giselle got to say. T.S. T.S. is always trying to get on. I don't know what you have to say, T.S. Giselle, but hop on. Let me. I'm in. I'm in a good mood. Let me hear what you got to say. T.S. T.S. All right, T.S. You put your hand up like you wanted to get on. I'm letting you on, and now you're not saying nothing. Now, T.S., did your strap on fall on the phone? All right. I think T.S. got some KY jelly on the phone receiver, and it's not working correctly. So I'm going to get T.S. off here. Now, T.S., don't ever say I don't have you on. I tried to get you on, and the gerbil in the house ran off with your phone. So I don't know what's going on over there, but you get that gerbil and put it back in the cage. You know not to have that gerbil running around like that. Um, let me get some more people in here. Let me talk to the family. A lot of folks, a lot of brothers in here. Where are all these niggas in here? It's the Million Man March up in here. What's going on with y'all brothers? Shout out to all the brothers in here. <laughs> Where are the women at? Hold on, let me find some women in here. 
It's just so many niggas in here. It feels like T.S. Giselle's bedroom. Hold on. All these niggas in here. Um, <laughs> let me see where the women. <laughs> All right. There you go. All right. Well, hold on, let me let me get Just Eve in here. Let me get some sisters in here. Then I'm going to get some of the brothers in here. All right. What's up, Just Eve? Black first to the family. Thank you, Tariq, for allowing me to speak. Um, why are the Democrats losing black voters? Because they have people like Stephanie Gallardo from Washington running and her husband is a whole illegal immigrant. Mm, mm. Wow. Wow. Where's he from, by the way? Um, I'm not really sure what his origins are, but I know that she's publicly stated that, you know, he, of his status and how we should be more compassionate because, you know, there's all these millions of people in the type of situation and, I think that it would be super monumental for her to put her personal situation to the side and think of the good of the country if yes, she wants indeed. the votes, you know? Yes, indeed. I 100% agree. We're not doing all of that. Um, we are the world stuff. They're going to have to come through for foundational black Americans. That's all there is to it. Um, T.S., you here. T.S., where you at? Okay. Oh, my gosh. I was having mic issues. Uh, Tyreek, first off, let me say that you do realize that a lot of your fans um, live on the East Coast. So it's after the midnight hour. So, you know, usually I don't have these type of interactions with men this late. But for you, no, yes, you do. I'll stay out for you. <laughs> oh, yes, you do. <laughs> you know, a lot of your fans are unemployed and don't have jobs. But, you know, I have meetings with clients in the morning. So when you come on so late, it's really difficult for me. <laughs> Well, please. Well, you can you can hop on here between clients. I mean, damn. You know, I'm not trying to mess your money up, but you know, you're trying to do some stank for a little bit of bank. So do your thing. I'm not trying to trying to mess I your have paper a up. Corporate job, okay. Oh, you know, okay. Is that what they call a it? A lot here? of your fans. Uh, a lot of your fans work at Amazon and drive forklifts, but you know, I have a corporate job in corporate America. <laughs> um, um, Matt, T.S. Um, Bussy porn on OnlyFans don't count as corporate jobs. Okay, that's still that's just you know, one happening of. Uh, you know, coin that I get. I'm all about okay. my Tyreek like you. I'm all about my coins. So I'm going to make a go. dollar any way that I can. You know, just like Yes, you, you are. So we're one of the yes. same in that regard. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Uh, so what's on your mind, T.S.? Yeah, so um, the title, of course, you know, you guys call me a Democratic Shield. Um, I am a proud Democrat. Um, so when you say that, why are Dems losing Black voters? You know, I think that legitimately black voters definitely do have reason to be a bit upset with the Biden administration. So a lot of times I troll in spaces, um, but it is, I do feel like there's genuine outrage, but Tyreek, again, what I get up, I don't want to say I get upset with, but what I don't understand Tyreek is you push this narrative, encouraging black people not to vote. But then on mm -hmm. the other hand, you're so invested into the campaign for Marcel Dixon it yeah. does not make sense to me. Make it make sense, Tyreek. So how, let me make it make also, sense. One let second, me make it also, make Marcel is running as a Democrat. And I've got a rebuttal to you and a suggestion to FDA as well after you go. <laughs> okay, let me let me make it make sense. Let me make it make all the sense in the world. I said we do not vote unless we have a candidate that's going to fight specifically for foundational Black Americans to get some tangibles. Marcel is doing that. Anytime you have a politician who's going to do something that's going to directly help foundational Black Americans, I'm going to support them. If they do not, I'm not going to support them or their party. I've been very clear on that. I have no problem with voting if there's something in it for me. Marcel has something in it for me. Down in Atlanta, I was supporting Paul Howard. He had something in it for me where he was going to punish race soldiers. Unfortunately, he lost and they got Bonnie Willis's ass in there and she's given passes to every race soldier she can and everything is going to hell down there. This is what I'm saying. If we're going to vote, let's be strategic with it. If there's nobody who's going to do anything, let's be strategic in withholding our vote until we get somebody who does. So I've been I've been very clear. It's not rocket science to um, Giselle, but go okay, ahead. So you, you mentioned the word strategic, Tyree. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not making sense why you, FBA would put so much into a candidate that's in an unwinnable race. Marcel Dixon is not electable. 
he's not going to beat Jim Clyburn. As a matter of fact, Jim Clyburn is going to slaughter Marcel Dixon. So if the goal, hold on, if mm-hmm. the goal is if the goal is to pass a reparations bill to grant Black Americans reparations, and one way to do that is you're going to need 430 votes in the House, you're going to need 51 votes in the Senate, if not more than that. So why has FBA put all of their eggs in one basket and Marcel Dixon, who's in a race that is not winnable? Oh. Why not look at the full electorate across the United States and look at districts where there are struggling current sitting members of Congress that actually may lose a race and then put pro-reparations candidates there, like Tamara in Georgia. She was mm-hmm. slaughtered by Raphael mm-hmm. Warnock because that's not a winnable race. That's my only thing is there's okay. no strategy in the voting. Marcel yeah. Dixon is never going to beat Jim Clyburn. So okay. it's really all been a waste. Let's keep it, it 100 and it's, honest. It's not a waste because let's 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 go here. My brother does have an opportunity and a chance to win. He does because the grassroots support is very Tyree, heavy. Stop well, it. You're going to have to let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Even if he doesn't win, that's still a victory because he's signal boosting the message in a political arena and he has numbers behind him. So even if he doesn't beat Clyburn, the numbers are going to come in and we're going to see that he ran on reparations and the numbers were very significant. And that there is a win. So other people in the political arena are going to see that and they're going to say, hey, we need to do something about this because if there's another candidate who has this same energy and a little more push, this thing can go to the next level. So this is sending a message. No matter what the outcome is going to be, the brother has a lot of support. The Democrats see this. That's why they know that they're in trouble. They're not getting all the votes they need to get because we're putting the votes and our support in some other people on the grassroots. That is hurting the Democrats right now. So we will make them or break them. Either way, they're going to have to come to the table and do what we need them to do. And we're sending a message by supporting our brother, uh, Marcel. So it's going to be a win no matter what. Uh, Tyreek, you're a very smart man. Mm -hmm. But Marcel is not electable. Yes, he is. He is not. What makes Um, him less electable than Coon Jim Clyburn? Marcel would be censured in Congress with his demeanor, his lack of skills, being able to debate appropriately. That brother is a phenomenal debater. The way that he yells, um, he is not the best option. Yes, Um, he is. Marcel is a phenomenal debater. Marcel is a phenomenal debater. Jim Clyburn ain't no damn debater. Jim Clyburn is an old so Uncle how Ruckus. Has, so how has Jim Clyburn been elected? Because of white times. people. He's Uncle Remus. But white people have been propping him. Black, but so, uh, is white I live money. in North Carolina, so I know about Jim Clyburn. I know about Jim Clyburn, too. They put a lot also, of white money behind Jim Clyburn. Why did it, you, not you in particular, but why uh-huh. did you guys go bust up his fish fry? Southern black people love a good fish fry. That was a disgrace, Tyree. Exactly. We don't need those type of tactics. Yes, Come they on. do need those tactics. So to get the butter biscuit eating Negroes, because there's a lot of Sambos out here who just will vote for butter biscuits and fish. So that's why he would get elected. And we're busting that up. We're stopping that coon train silly nonsense because people out here are suffering and we need viable candidates who's going to do something specifically for us that's tangible and not just have catfish nuggets and babbling. So, yeah, I I agree with you. We do need viable candidates that are pro reparations, but Marcel is not one of them. Oh, yes, he is. My best advice, Tyreek. My mm-hmm. best advice is because this is a midterm election, but in two years, you know, a lot of people in Congress and senators will be up for re-election. The better strategy would be to look at the entire electorate and look at districts which are winnable. Going up against Warnock and Clyburn and Maxine Waters, that you know that's not a winnable strategy. That's my only long, point. Okay. You need, you need okay. actual as long, electable candidates. We need to get the message out there. Le- look, let's be very clear. It's not but about the getting, me- but the message. We need to get the message out expressed. there, no matter what. I and I agree, but the message is very negative and extremist. 
Um, and reparations. When I touch on mainstream, not no, reparations. No, no, no. I'm talking about That's... the anti-African immigrant rhetoric. Let's oh no! Keep stop. it 100. Here. Okay, stop. And, and stop. So, okay, let's slow it down. All right, you're gonna let's slow it down. Let's slow it down. There is no anti-African rhetoric. Let's not say that. That's not true. There is no anti-African rhetoric, and also, it is okay for us to want to look out for our own group. Looking out for our own group is not anti-anything, Giselle. So there is no anti-African rhetoric. Let's not say, let's not start spewing falsehoods, all right? Where are you, T.S.? Yeah, I'm here. Now, Tyreek, you know, you can bully those Africans, but you know, I will go toe-to-toe with you. So that is a lie. I told you, you I, called, I, do, I told you many times, I do not want to go toe-to-toe with you because you would poke me with your penis. So please don't say that. And we're not bullying anybody. We're not hating on any Africans. Nobody's doing that. We're just talking about getting tangibles for foundational Black Americans. That's all it is. Okay. Now, Tyreek, you're getting $5 Montel Jordan. I can roast too. I'm from the same culture. Oh, anyway, and, you got and $5 Montel cool. Jordan. That's what you're and, getting. And, and to TS, you over there looking like Big Bang Hank from the Sugar Hill Gang with a lace front. Let's not go there tonight, please. Tyreek, all right. I don't even know what that means. Oh, yeah. let me be serious. So, okay. Tyreek, I'm not going to let you get away with that. Because okay. I've been in many FBA spaces where the rhetoric is anti-immigrant, anti-African immigrant, anti-Caribbean immigrant. As a matter of fact, I'll go as far as saying that in many FBA spaces hosted by Secure the Tribe or all of those other you know, subcategories, they promote replacement theory. Mm-hmm. They say that they oppose all immigration, that they're going to call ICE on our Black brothers and sisters. That's bullshit, Tyreek. I've heard that lunatic Yaya uh, promote that shit. Fuck that bitch. No. How dare you? How dare you say that you're going to call ice on our black brothers and sisters? How dare you? That is replacement theory. To say that, that is not replacement theory. To okay. Say that you- okay, calm down because now your voices get deep and you're scaring me. So that's not replacement theory. We don't have to support immigration. We don't. We don't. Why are we obligated to support immigration? We don't want to support immigration. We just want to look out for ourselves. We don't. We don't. We're not obligated to support immigration. We're not going to be shamed into supporting immigration. We don't want to support it. It doesn't work for us. So we we shouldn't support it. I don't support it. I don't hate on nobody. If you want to thrive in your own homeland, knock yourself out. I'm not for immigration. It doesn't work for foundational black Americans. So what's wrong with us not wanting immigration, something that don't work for us? What's wrong with that? Be mad at an African immigrant coming no, to America. No, 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 stop it. I didn't say I'm mad. I'm not mad at nobody. I'm just not going to support you. Let's stop that. I'm mad. We ma- we're not mad at anybody. We're up here trying to live our own lives. We're not trying to take on everybody else's problems. Why are we obligated to take on other people's problems? And if we don't, we're mad at them. I don't care what you do in your homeland. Do you. But I don't want you to come over here and I got to start feeding you and you got to eat off my little resources. No, I'm not obligated to that, man. As black people, thank you. As black people, for us to fight white supremacy, we have to be united, Tyreek. We need. But the the united thing is one-sided. No, 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 no. United goes both ways, okay? The only thing that's united is the airlines bringing niggas over here to eat off us. That's the only thing that's united is United, Delta, and Southwest. But the unitedness is only one-sided. Nobody's uniting with us over there. Nobody's rolling out the red carpet to build anything over there. We can't have a relationship like that, right? Yeah, I just don't understand the vitriol that we have for black no people. vitriol. These are our cousins, no our vitriol, cousins. and some of your cousins have to take their ass home and do them. You can't take care of your cousins all the time. You just can't. You got to let your cousins do them. I can't take care of all the family members. All the family members can't keep coming to Big Mama's house every Thanksgiving, and then won't leave, and then won't contribute to the household. 
You understand? So we got to have a reciprocal thing. But thank you, okay. T.S. Thank you so well, much. Hold on, thank, thank, no, no, no. Thank, thank you so much because you, you're all over the place. All right. Because now when you're saying stuff, were you mad? And you, we can't be mad at that. Okay. That, uh, okay. Now you're just projecting a bunch of stuff now. These are false conversations here. Let's get some more people in here. All right, raise your hand, family. And by the way, man, look, um, people, we got the new film that we're working on called American Maroon. Ladies and gentlemen, click the link on my profile, the, the pinned tweet that I have. Get involved with that film. We got a lot of great perks um, and, and a lot of great packages with that new film. Um, it's so very important that we teach real history for our children in this movie that we're doing, you can have all your kids watch. The last documentary I did, the hit film, Buck Breaking, phenomenal film. I, I would warn people, it really wasn't for kids because there's a lot of explicit stuff in the documentary. So that was one of the only films that I did that I would not recommend to, to small children. There's a lot of, in, in order for us to tell that story, we had to tell all of it. And there's a lot of um, somewhat ex explicit things in it. Good movie, nonetheless. Now, this new movie, it's not explicit. It's there's a lot of violence in it. Now, you know, if your kid, you know, if your kid plays Xbox, they, you know, they see shooting and stuff like that. So there's some violence in it, but nothing sexually explicit. So very good movie for the family. Um, let me get um, who is this? Jew. Let's get Jew in here. Jew up here with her her king. All right. Hop on in here, Jew. Jew, where you at, dear? All right. Hello, Jew. All right. Come on now. When you raise your hand, I'm going to need y'all to hop on and do what you do. All right. Let's get some more people in here. Let's get, um, who is this person? A cynic. Let's get a cynic. A cynic something. Turn your microphone on. Hello? What's up, a cynic? Okay, brother, I hear you breathing. What's going on with you? Okay. Now, I don't know how people's phones are this janky in this day and age. I just don't understand it. How is your phone this raggedy? With all the technology, we got damn near flying saucers running around here. You still got niggas with raggedy brick phones. Uh, I just don't get it. All right. Let's get, um, there's a lot of folks in here. Y'all raise your hand if you want to get on. Let me see who's ready and whose phone is working correctly. Let me get Stealth in here. Stealth, Stealth, can you hop on? You good? Then I'm going to get um, Kamala Wright. I'll get her in here next. What's up, Stealth? What's up, brother? Just want to send you a fellow shout out from L.A. Keep doing what you're doing, brother. No doubt, man. Much respect to you, family. All right, let's get um, um, Kamala. Yeah, how, let's get her in here. How are you, Tariq? I'm good, beloved. How are you? I'm good. I know you say you wanted some ladies to come up, so I'm here. <laughs> but yeah. um, I but on but I would like to stay on topic too. Um, I'm FBA, and one of the reasons why these Democrats are losing, I mean, I can't believe what that TS person was saying, but they actually think that we should be voting for catfish and collard greens and getting right. no tangibles. Or I listen to you, okay? And I'm ready because we need them to cut the check. Yes. Yes, indeed, man. We're not playing around. They're, they're going to have to come through with it, man. We are not playing around right now. We need tangibles. Y'all not doing no symbolic gestures with us. We're not going for any symbolic gestures. What's up, Jew? You want to try it again, Jew? Are you hearing me? Okay, it's a dude. Okay, I thought it was a woman. Okay, what's up, Jew? Are you hearing me? Yeah, All right, I man, I agree with you on the cowardice stuff with the other races. I mean, I live in Orange County, 
like 30 minutes from LA. And um, in this area, there's many whites, Asian, Hispanics, and living here. My first time ever dealing with um, microaggressions. And this is my ever, first time ever hearing of the term. And they have to be micro with us because if they were macro and said it with their whole chest, it's going to be some problems. But they do these microaggressions hoping that we don't catch them at all. Yeah, yeah, that's real talk. Uh, but thank you for the call, Jew. I appreciate you. Let's get um Pico. What's up? Pika Bro Teak. Pika Bro Teak. Let's get her in here. All right, sister, hop on. All right. Pika Bro, Pika Brow, whatever your name is. Uh, while we're waiting on you, let's get one voice. One voice, what's happening? <laughs> hey, Tariq, how you doing? I'm good. How are you, sister? I'm good, thank you. So I agree with you that voting for an unviable uh, candidate to get the message out, um, put the bug in the other voters' ears and run with it. Um, so we're coming into the midterms and we're losing Democratic voters, according to the article. I went and read it and... So we, at this point, have to hold people accountable, though. Yeah, we do. We do. I mean, we just can't sit back and let them, you know, we can create a bill and send it to our legislatures, right? We can, we can yeah. Schoolhouse Rock taught us how to do that. How does the bill start? So we need to invest more in our own selves, like you said, to mm -hmm. motivate our people, especially our young people, I have this theory about these, you know, this Z generation in our community, the young black men and sisters 18 to 25. I, I have this theory and I'll share it real quick. Um, they don't seem to have any wherewithal. They don't have any respect. They don't have any drive. They want to get what they get by taking from others namely our own, without giving anything into the community or even trying trade school or anything. Two semesters, you can go to community college for free and get an A-plus certification start, work your way up in technology, period. But they're too busy fighting and wanting to take, smash, and grab. You know, these are the grandchildren, Tariq. They're... They're old enough to be your grandchildren and mine. I'm 62. I was here in L.A. along with the big old 80s and 90 crack epidemic that they planted in our community. How many do you know how many women had babies addicted to crack that survived? Those women are the parents of these grandchildren. And unfortunately, they don't have a lot of training and home training and support because their mothers were addicted to crack. So they might've been raised in the raggedy foster care system. But do you think that they mentored and, you know, taught their own children? No. And, and that is the problem with the people talk about what's going on with the young folks. Now, the reason why things are going on with them now is because the generation before them was bullshit. Yes. They were messing around, partying, didn't build nothing, didn't create nothing for them, and now they're out here stuck. Look at the homeless ep epidemic that's out here in Los Angeles. Nobody has anything now. Nothing. So now I'm talking to the young people trying to get them right and trying to let them know and give them some direction on what to do because, uh, again, a lot of the older black folks are just out here like, hey, let's just vote no matter what, and that's not working. But thank you for the call, beloved. Thank you so much. So that's the problem, ladies and gentlemen. The problem is people point the finger at the young people, which is a lot of you. A lot of you guys are very young. My listeners have a lot of young listeners. A lot of your your, your parents, they kind of left you to the wolves, unfortunately. There's a reason why we get a big audience over here. A lot of people listen and tune in. Because I'm going to tell you what your, your parents are really afraid to tell you. You're going to listen to me because you're going to get the real. 
your parents, they're still talking kumbaya talk. They don't want to talk too radical because what I'm saying is radical to them. And a lot of your parents don't want to get in trouble. They don't want to get no good trouble at their job. So they can't really talk like I talk. They can't make movies like I make movies. I can make movies going in because I'm not beholden to none of these damn white supremacists. Your parents, they got to go to work every day and, and kind of tap dance a little bit. So they program their mind to not be so radical. When they want to feel radical, let's just pray on it. Mm. And, and my young folks see what that get down is. And they're like, oh, man, I can't rock with that. Because the young folks are the main targets of these damn white supremacists. The young folks are hitting me up when something happens to them. They're not hitting up mom and dad or what, whoever. They got to hit me up to, to get help on what to do when these race soldiers are coming at them because mom and dad is telling them to pray on it and forgive and all of this goofy nonsense. We got to get our young folks ready. We got to make sure our young folks are good. Like I said earlier, when I see young folks getting hemmed up, we go out here and try to help out as many people as we can. We try to go and we have their backs. We cannot turn our backs on our young folks out here. We got to be out here grinding, policing these areas, making sure our folks don't get harmed. That's why there's so much ruckus in certain parts of the hood. If there's no direction. You have no older folks out here, no OGs out here really chopping it up like they used to. It's real raggedy. We got to clean all of that stuff up. But we also got to focus on the real issue, which is systematic white supremacy. Pika Brow, you here, dear? Yes. Good evening. How good are evening. you, Melissa? Fine, sir. How are you? I'm good. What's on your mind, ma'am? I had a question. Well, actually a comment. Um, yep. So I've been researching everything that happened over in Buffalo. And apparently um, it says that he's only going to be charged with one count of murder. Yeah, it's just going to be one count. They're not going to charge all the individual murders. They're just going to charge it as one count of murder and it ain't even a hate crime charge yet so exactly this, so this thing is funky from top to bottom this is why all of that forgiveness talk you don't do there's a reason why cnn was out there putting the, the, the microphone in everybody's faces talking about do you forgive do you forgive which they wouldn't do that nonsense down there in texas and black folks older black folks in particular y'all have to stop doing that nonsense when these white reporters come putting a camera in your face and coaching you into talking about forgiveness, you never take the bait. Please stop taking that bait. Let me get some more folks in here. Who is this divine? Wait, I had somebody on here earlier. Wait, wait, wait. I had somebody on here. Whoop. Let me get um. Hold on. Let me get divine. Divine, let me get you in here. What's up, divine? I'm good, man. How are you, sir? Quick, I won't take long. I just wanted to uh, first applaud you with the way you redirected TS. Um, that's happening in a lot of spaces out here in New York as we're uh, pushing back against what's going on with the reparations bill and the Pan-Africanists and stuff. What they do is and because yeah. they can't make the argument, there's no data set, so any logical uh, reasoning on why we should not be pushing and being self-interested, they go with the way they frame it where it's like vitriol and anger and and you hate these other groups so right. i'm glad that you did that and secondly as i land my, my plane real quick um the the one voice that other sister that got up here the um the grandmother she came out and yeah. you know though there was some validity you know because we're dealing with that you know some of the fallout from the crack crack epidemic out here in new york city you know what's interesting is that she tried to put a lot of the onus on the younger crowd and the apathy and things of nature and, and the younger generation not wanting anything. But then when you go through her timeline, she out there talking about let's just reelect uh, Warnock. So it's like they gotta take oh, cool. they gotta take responsibility for the shit that they're doing too, where they're just doing this symbolic bullshit as far as voting is concerned and not pushing for tangibles, but then trying to blame the younger people for not going along with the get along. Right. Real talk, man. Real, real talk. Thank you for the call, brother. Man, yeah, we got to look out for our young folks out here. Man, that's that's my primary concern, getting our young folks' minds together. That's why I started doing the Hidden Color series. I started doing the Hidden Color series over a decade ago because I knew the impact it would have on the youth, and now we're seeing the fruits of that. We have a lot of younger folks who are, who are people who were younger back then who are getting older, and they got gamed up. 
they saw that and that that opened up a certain level of consciousness. So now they're like, no, nah, we're not playing this BS game with these politicians. We're not going to play these games with the school system. We're going to stand up for ourselves. We know real history. We know what our culture is. So now people are getting more codified. It's a process. It's absolutely a process. Let's get Brian's granny. Brian's granny with the picture of Dorothy Dandridge on the page. What's up, Brian's granny? You can turn the microphone on, Brian's granny. Okay, I'm com I'm confused. You you talk about white supremacy, but at the same time, it seems like you're promoting the takeover of the government by pure white right, white supremacists, which are Republicans. I'm I'm confused. Um, no, nah, I didn't. When did I say anything about a Republican? I haven't even mentioned a Republican, ma'am. You're it, it sounds like that you are telling people not to vote for uh the Democrats, and just like this, right? This guy said something about Warnick. Uh, would you prefer Herschel Walker, who's a puppet for the Republicans, who, yes. who obviously has CTE? I'm not understanding. Yeah. Give me that big dumb nigga over Warnock. Yes, I would support okay. Herschel Walker over Warnock. Warnock will actively try to undermine us. Herschel Walker is just a big goofy Negro that don't know what's going on. I'll take him over Warnock all day. Warnock is going to actively undermine us and use our resources for LGBT, immigrants, white women, okay. Hispanics, okay. Ukrainians. Okay. He's not going to okay. do nothing for us. Okay. Herschel Walker is too stupid to undermine us. So yeah, well, put well, him in there. Give me Herschel. He's a puppet, so what do you mean he's too stupid? Warnock is direct, one too. Uh, directing Herschel. Warnock is a puppet too, ma'am. You understand that? Okay, you know what? It's going to be interesting to see all these these goals that you guys have uh, happen after Republicans take over. But you guys have a nice day. Okay, ma'am, if they take over, what's going to happen to black folks? What's going to happen to black folks? Uh-huh. If the Republicans take over, what's going to happen to us negatively? What's going to happen? Well, you'll see. But uh, Not they, only no, 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 see, see, no, 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 damn, no, not a damn thing is gonna happen. Okay, nothing. Is that nothing. what is that what some Republican uh, uh, leaders are paying you to say, ma'am? Stop that. Every time somebody calls out the Democratic fraud, y'all start talking about we're getting paid by the Republicans. Yes, you are. Yes, you are, ma'am. Okay, you prove can dig it, a out. It is. Ma'am, Gladys, stop it, ma'am, because you're you're projecting now, Gladys. Okay, let's not do that. Okay. Just because so we're not back trying to your comedy <laughs> routine, because that's what you do. That's what Gladys. you do. Fall back to Gladys. your comedy routine. Yeah. You're, full, you're upset because you're you're upset, upset. Ma'am, Gladys. Gladys, you're upset because we're not going for the goddamn catfish nugget scam, and you want your catfish nuggets, Gladys. I'll get you some catfish nuggets. You're one of these people that show up for the, the, the butter biscuits and the collard greens and all that. And you want us to go along because you don't want to feel like a plantation mammy. OK, don't try to drag us into your plantation fantasies, Gladys. Where, where did she go? OK, she bounced. This is your Democratic Party right here. That's your Democratic base right there. This is why the Democrats are losing, because these plantation mammies. Many of them are just kind of dying off. The plantation mammies have a shelf life. And these scare tactics don't work no more. If you, you better not, you, you, if you're going to get in some good trouble, if the Republicans get in there now, did you, 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 that what you want? Is that what you want now? If the Republicans get in there, it's going to be some big trouble. It's going to be a whole heap of trouble. All right, what's going to happen? Uh, you see... <laughs> what is this an episode of scooby-doo there's a mystery man somewhere stop it nothing is going to happen ladies and gentlemen with these scare tactics not a damn thing is going to happen to us that is not already happening nothing we're going to be more in danger and more undermined and more disenfranchised under the democrats as we are now 
Biden is in office. We're going through hell. We're getting hit left and right with Biden. We're getting hit with the immigrants. The white LGBT community always attacks us. The Asian community is attacking us. We're getting hit with hate crime charges, even if they attack us. This is all under the damn Democrats. We're getting slaughtered under the, the Democrats right now. The money that's supposed to go to us, they're giving it to Afghanistanians. They're giving it to Ukrainians. They're giving it to Hispanics. We are better off if there were Republicans in there and they ain't paying me and I'm not a Republican. But if I were, that would be OK. We would be in a better position. That's the lesser of the evil. Yes, they promote white supremacy. The Democrats promote white supremacy. But other than white supremacy. The Republicans don't do anything to harm us. In fact, the policies kind of work in our favor. They stop a lot of the immigration. That works for us. They stop a lot of that butt breaking that's happening in the school system. That works for us. You understand? They're not allocating our resources and our tax dollars to all of these other different countries like that. That works for us. Indirectly, we're not getting the tangible that, that we need, but the indirect benefits are even better than what we're getting from the damn Democrats, which is nothing. Don't let these plantation mammies call up here with these damn scare tactics that they don't even believe no more. Oh, goodness. Who is this? What's up, Carol? Who is this sister here? Let me get some more sisters in here. Let's get Carol in here. Carol, somebody's sexy auntie. All right, let's get Carol in here. Carol, hop in here, ma'am. Now, can you hear me? I can hear you, Carol. I'm How are wonderful. you? Wonderful. I'm so glad you're talking about this tonight. I don't know what to do. You have me in my have me in my bed screaming with my phone in my hand. That's just how that's <laughs> how I am 59 years old. I will be 60 in October. Yeah, damn. You first let's stop right there. Is this picture recent of yes, you on is. your page? You a fine motherfucker for well, your thank age. You very much. What's happening? Thank you very much. Now okay. the, two, the okay. two mammies you had on there is yes, the reason why my our generation baby boomer, the last pieces of the baby boomers are in the predicament we are in right now because of yes. the stupidity of what we've been taught for years that the Democrats were our savior. Yes. Yes. Indeed. We do not know the history yeah. of the Democrats. You know why? Because we do not read. We do not research. We do not dig into information to find out who these people are, why nothing has changed since 1865. To 2022. Yeah. Same mess. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. All right. Thank you for the call, Aunt Carol. Shout out to Aunt Carol. That was Aunt Carol. Some whose fine auntie was that? I should ask. Whose fine auntie was that? This woman's almost like 60 years old, looking good as hell. Y'all be having these fine aunties out here. Somebody's gonna be on her sofa with the plastic on it hitting it from the bike i don't find aunties of these out here let's get some more people on here they're gonna tear the plastic up off the sofa hitting that <laughs> lord that's a cute auntie all right okay let's see what else we got in here all right let's get let's get um all right clyde i get brother clyde in here what's up brother clyde we got a lot of folks in here. What's up, Clyde? Hey, how you doing, Tyreek? Uh, shout out to the fam. Um, I'm at work, so if y'all hear some noise, I do security. I apologize for that. I'm, I'm trying to be in a quiet space real quick. No um, doubt. No doubt. Yeah, it's about that time. You know, I wish we would have been, you know, let the Dems fall on their face. They ain't never did nothing for us. So better late than never. Um, I just got through watching this video with our people getting shot down in Buffalo. That was my first time seeing it. I just checked it out on my uh my homegirl page, just Eve, salute to her. And that shit, nigga, that shit hit so damn different. Look, when we start letting these cops take them to jail, we already know the script. We need to get on right. point to where when they start locking them up, we waiting on their ass when they get out, man. You know, yeah. we can't be just letting this keep happening. Where we just we know we know it ain't no love for us in the system. 
So, yeah, I'm, I'm going on like what we all been saying, man. It's time for us to just protect ourselves, protect our families, and put justice into our own hands. They can't get real. Thank you. Thank you so much for the call. I had to land your plane for you, but let me get some more folks on here. All right. Um, a cynic, you ready to go back again? Look, a cynic, hop, hop on, man. Um, okay. A cynic, hop on. Hello? What? There I you got go. it. There you go. How are you, Senator? I'm good. How are you, Tariq? I'm good. I'm good. So what's on your mind? Well, I've been listening, and I, I listen to you often, but I don't interject too often because I do understand being white. I don't have too much to say about too wow. many of these subjects. But again, tonight, it seems so much so that you sound so racist. And I think of all those people in Buffalo, and I think, was that guy saying... Are you FBA or are you just brown, black, whatever? That's all he was shooting. So it's, he doesn't right. care. So you said so racist so, okay. don't care about the difference. Okay, so are you saying that I sounded racist? Yes, you always do. You always sound like the like how, the how, mammies were saying that you sound like you don't uh, not only don't care for, but you'd like to see the end of. Anybody that's black that comes from another country, so that's now that's a that's a real racist. A horrible, I was brought up with all that. That's a horrible projection in I'm your white your culture. I know you've told that that's lady. Projection. She was all of the ladies. Um, ma'am, ma'am. Okay, you're going to slow down, um, Karen. Uh, you're not going to project your white supremacist culture on me. I never said anything like that. I don't wish any harm on my African brethren and Caribbean brethren and sisters at all. You're projecting. And that's a part of your white supremacist culture, ma'am. Now, why are you projecting onto me? Karen, turn your microphone on. It went off. But there you go, because I had to because you weren't going to talk over me. I had to Oh, I had see. To, so you were take, turning it off. Okay. Yeah, I had to mute. You. I had to mute you for a second because I do you understand over me. So, um, so why are you projecting your white supremacist culture on me, ma'am? Well, I don't intend to do that. I listen with um, what I hope is an anti-racial aspect. I want to understand everything that's going on with your viewpoint. Mm -hmm. I I do understand. I'm like. Why are they giving all these millions of dollars to all they suddenly have all that Ukrainian money? Why don't they just give it to you guys? I don't understand that either. So I'm, right. I'm completely clear on all of that. So I, I well, how am I racist? How am I racist? Because I want my tax dollars to go to my people who need it. So how is that racist? That part isn't racist at all. It's the part that you where you uh, have feelings about other people that are not from America and you project on them all of the hatred and vitriol that I, I understand that you have, I guess, against white people. No, I don't. I don't hate nobody who's from another place. I want them to build up their countries. I didn't say anything negative about them. I want them to build their own nations and thrive. That's not racist. Well, they are coming to this country to thrive. That's why they're coming. That's why all immigrants come to this country to thrive. And the problem is a lot of people come here and not only do they undermine us, they come here and extrapolate the resources directly from foundational black Americans. And me well, not wanting that to happen is not racist. That's survival. My family can't survive when people do that. And my family deserves to survive. The foundational black American family, they deserve life. And you We're are right. obligated to, to cape for everybody. Uh, but together you don't you can get more than you can throwing hammers at each other saying get how it to so? us no, get it to us because that's how that's how unions work no that's what a union is the ironic thing is as a white woman y'all don't let people immigrate into your neighborhoods you don't let um, Asians, you don't let Hispanics, you don't let African or Caribbean immigrants in your communities. Well, I live in a diverse neighborhood. Oh, uh, no, you don't. You know, yeah, y'all say that you don't. You do not live I in do. A I do. No, y'all dump them over here in our neighborhoods. Y'all do not let them live in white neighborhoods. 
at all. You don't let immigrants, y'all are the main ones not letting immigrants live in your communities. They get dumped in our You can area. blame white people. I have no problem with you blaming white people I, it, for, it, not it, for, for anything it, you want. So that's to. The yeah. You're talking, that's very ironic coming from somebody who's from white society who don't let no immigrant groups come around them. You guys put barriers around your communities more than anybody and you're pointing the finger telling me how we need to let everybody in. The, no, I'm I, talking to you personally, Tariq. Like I thought you were talking to me personally. I was but, talking but to you're like representing black a, men. But you're representing a culture, ma'am, and you're representing a culture that has decidedly um, circled their wagons against immigrants and all outsiders. That's well, I don't believe the- all black people are racist against uh, immigrants. I just believe you are. But ma'am, you just and projecting some your, of your colors. Culture, and you're projecting your culture. That's part of your culture of racism. So no matter what I would do in my life, I could never erase that, I guess. The truth right. from, from you, I'm, I'm just white. And, right. and, and you're projecting but, your culture. Instead of fixing your culture, you're Which I've spent my whole, I'm 63. I've spent my whole life trying to fix that culture. I don't give nobody an A for effort. It's still here and you didn't do a good job. So now. No, no, we did not do a good job. And that's why we have to work harder and we have to unite instead of dividing. The more we divide, your the more community we cannibalize our, you, our efforts. Your community, they're the main dividers. So you're not going into their chat rooms in their spaces pointing out their yes, racism and their division. Yes, I am. You're I not. don't often go, I, like I said, I didn't, I just listen on your station because I usually don't have much to contribute, but I, I really didn't like the way you treated those two women that you called mammies. Yeah, it was very racist. Because you I thought know, that itself that's not racist. Things you were saying. Oh, that's yeah. not racist. That's not racist because I'm the same race as them and I'm not exerting any power over them. You like the mammy spirit because that works for you. You like these docile, complacent Negroes that's going to go along with the program and not get in anything tangible and just remain powerless. That's what you like. That's why you're defending that type of mentality because you know that's an in that's a disempowering mentality. Shame on you, ma'am. Am I allowed to talk now? Yes, you are. I uh, it's good because I I mean it's good for you because you have the ability to stop me from talking and you have the ability to hang up. You damn right, like I just muted you here, because this is my space where I control the flow of the conversation, and I don't let anybody come in here and say things that are untrue, and I don't let people come in here and project things from their culture onto me and my Foundation of Black American Family without checking them. And you're being checked right now, ma'am. All right? Now, I'm going to need you to land your plane, Miss Susan. So you're still speaking to me and Go I ahead, will, dear. Go ahead. Okay. That I think people are better united in a mission to uh get what they want and by isolating each other, pointing each other out as uh United lesser, how? excuse me. United how? United to you should choose a candidate, unite every black face around that candidate and take that candidate from the primary to the uh, election completely black backed by blacks of it now why every, now, what, what, what do we what do we get out of it hopefully you get what you're asking for that's what you do you you pick that person based on the fact that they're going to get you what you want which is reparations which is there cool. you go you want do reparations you, you should no. pick Someone who is good at uh, speaking about reparations, somebody who has talented at reparations and use and a, a lawyer. I'm sure you have plenty of black uh, college students and, and those who are, are in uh, a law school, a school that would be perfect to be running for this. We are supporting a reparations candidate, a brother named Marcel Dixon. We are supporting him now. So we are doing that. But that's excellent. And that, again, united, the more black folk, the more white folk that vote for this person, the better. Now, so, have you been supporting reparations for foundational black Americans, ma'am? 
Yes, yes, I do. Okay. We need you to get your community vocal about it. You don't need to be here finger wagging me. I'm a victim of white supremacy. I don't need your white fingers pointing and wagging at me. I need you in your community galvanizing the the non-racist white people to get them to support reparations for foundational black Americans. That's that's your job, ma'am. And I will do, oh, uh, I didn't know it was just my job. I thought it was for black people to vote that way as well. Oh, we we're but always I mean, do whatever we need to do to be in our best interest. Um, by okay. the way, by the way, um, uh, you uh, you clearly you've been voting Democrat. You're a Democrat, right? Uh, actually, <laughs> I registered Republican when I was 18. Okay. To be, uh, in the vote in the party of Lincoln, I had no idea that the Republicans right. were a bunch of jokes. So now, I, I now just to be, I uh, um, I am independent. Got it. Let me ask you this. What do you think about the Cal Rittenhouse case? Do you think that that was a just case with Cal Rittenhouse, the outcome of that case? Do you think Cal Rittenhouse was justified in his actions? Are you talking about the fellow uh, making sure the fellow that shot the people at the protest? Right, right, right. Yeah, he should go to jail for life. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we need you to be vocal okay. about that one, too. All right. But thank you so much, yeah. Jim. Yeah. Some in here. All right. Okay. Okay. Well, that's very interesting. She's trying to wink, wave her finger at us talking about how we black folks got to embrace everybody and we got to unite and we got to welcome all the immigrants. White society don't welcome no damn immigrants. That's boy, the irony. And she's a progressive or not even a progressive. She says she's independent, but she's really a Republican. All right. When you have a, a bunch of people who say, well, uh, I was Republican, but now I'm independent. That means they're still Republican. That, that don't don't be fooled. She's still a Republican. They don't let no damn immigrants around them. They don't. They do not have immigrants around them in white society. You don't go to white society and see a bunch of immigrant businesses there, little bodegas and all that. They put all of that around us. Don't let these people run that game and talk about uniting and we got to welcome everybody when they don't do that. They don't do that at all. Let's get Duran. Let's get Brother Darren in it. Is it Duran or Darren or Duran? Get Brother D. I just say Brother D. What's up, D? What's going on, Tariq, man? Hey, man. How are you, sir? I'm doing fine, man. I appreciate you standing on your square, brother. Uh, I want to answer your why the Dixiecrats losing black voters. Uh because they're Dixiecrats. But uh, yeah. I want to also say, uh, Tariq, uh, uh, about the uh, T.S. Tom Selleck uh, lady that was up here. Uh, yeah. that spoke on my uh, queen, Yaya, who's part of uh, Origin Global. I rebuke her. But also, yeah. Tariq, I want to let you know, on September 24th, uh, we are galvanizing people. And the, the, ladies, the white lady, Cynic, is welcome to uh, join hands and galvanize with us and uh, come to her state capitol. Uh, at, at her prospective state and, um, you know, announce these demands of uh, of uh, bullet points, starting with reparations, immigration, uh, protective child custody, and um, a hate crime, which we don't have. But also, right. to, to re <clears throat> in addition to that, uh, I want to let you know that uh, Origin Global is going to have its first annual award uh, show in Vegas. Uh, the date will be announced if you can get with Yaya. But brother, you are a recipient, recipient of, uh, of the first award. Yeah, and I want to I want to take uh, pay tribute to you because uh, by uh, uh, watching your actions, I'm also making a movie here in Pensacola, and uh, I want to tell you thank you, my brother. Much respect, man. I appreciate you, brother. No doubt. Let me get some more folks in here. I ain't gonna be on here too too long, guys. Because I've been on here long enough, and I think we're having. I, I want to be as constructive as we can be. I want to be very constructive. What's up? Shout out to Wani. I see Wani, Sister Wani. I see Wani. I see Teslin. I see Nas. I see Black Voltron. Shout out to everybody. We got all the, the soldiers in here. We got all the riders in here y'all need to be following. Uh, a lot of folks out here. And and again, don't, don't forget, guys, go to my pinned tweet. Go to my profile. Y'all click my profile and go to the Kickstarter page and get involved with the new movie we're doing. We got a lot of great perks. For people who get involved with the making of the new film, it's going to be another historic piece. And uh, let me get a couple of more people in here before we roll out. Um, let's get 
Okay. Right. We got a lot of folks in there. I want to get some new faces that we've not talked to before. Let's get Trevor Tiltman. Let's get Trevor. What's up, Trevor? Hey, Trevor, turn your microphone on, bro. Testing one, two, three. <laughs> there you hey, go. Hey, Tariq. There you go. How are you? Uh, long time you follower, listener of your uh, opinions. Um, yes, sir. Yeah, I like to say that the I guess the last woman calling, you know, she probably when her view of it, I guess diverse neighborhoods, probably a couple ethnic neighbor, you know, ethnic restaurants where the people are probably you know bust in from a, you know, quickly changing FBA neighborhood. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, yeah. A diverse neighborhood means a yoga class in her. Yeah, community. That's yeah. What you know, I'm, I mean, I, I, I'm sympathetic, you know, for what you're saying, and it, it is, you know, overlooked by. You know, a lot of the, the white community. I mean, I know Compton in the early 90s was mostly a FBA neighborhood, which has dramatically changed with, you know, the Salvadorian Guatemalan uh, immigration. Um, and a lot of the history and the culture of that neighborhood. Um, that it's, it, it hasn't dramatically changed. It's damn near completely changed. Compton is damn near all Hispanic at this point. It's it's completely yeah. changed. But yeah, no, it, it, it's yeah. A, it's a it's a rough situation. Um, and I, I I actually I got on listening um a couple callers um ago. I, I guess the the woman um you called a a, a mammy. That's when I I got on. But um my my question for you is, um you know a lot of people think. If you're not voting Democrat, it's automatically a Republican vote. And, you wow. know, I, I'm someone, um, you know, I'll just say I'm, I'm a 35-year-old I'm a white guy. And I, I have a lot of problems with um, both parties. Um, but I, right. I still feel it's like my, my civic duty um, to vote. And, you know, I, I, I wanted to find a, you know, I couldn't vote. I'm not voting green. You know, that's just like Democrats on steroids. Or, or sort of libertarian, where it's, they're, just, they're just like complete anarchist. Where I, I mean, I, right. I, I, I went down the list of like two hundred names um, for a, a writing candidate, and, and you know, I, I couldn't find one person that um, I thought was a sane individual. <laughs> um, right. And uh, I'm wondering if you have any sort of uh, political ambitions to put your name out there. And, uh, you know, look, you, you look, all your followers, you know, it's the FBA community, but I, I feel like some of your, your topics would resonate with, um, you know, a lot of white voters. Um, and, you know, right. look, I'm not, I'm not some, you know, white liberal. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty moderate. And, you know, some stuff you bring up, like, you know, why is our money going, you know, to all these places around the world where it could be, it could help right here. And I, I'm just gonna say, you put your name out there, and some of your your message can be tailor made uh, to you know a quote unquote d more diverse audience. I mean, you know, you don't have to change it that there, much, but uh, there you go. I'm gonna land your plane for you, buddy. Thank you, thank you. I got it. Let me let me address that. I got I got to land your plane. He's one of them talking white guys who he sounds like a car salesman. That's how I'm gonna be talking at the car dealership. We got a Mazda. It, it, this Mazda runs really great. This Mazda is really has a great motor, low on mileage. It's a it's a it, it's a fun fit. It's a convertible. It's going to be great for the summer. You can drive down there to Compton. Go down there to Tams where they killed the person Chuck Knight and those people. You go down there. Is you, you have a Tam burger and then you go to Crenshaw on your Mazda. It's going to be a great vehicle for you. I promise you. I got a great deal. You can just put a little bit down. I look at your credit. Yeah, uh, there, there are some issues on there, but we can overcome those issues. We're going to look at your middle score. Your middle score, we're going to run it through my manager. We're going to make sure you get it. So just sit tight for 15 minutes. We're going to run that credit again. I got to get the approval from my manager, but you're looking very good, buddy. Yeah, that's he's he's one of them kind of white dudes. He just go. You got to stop him. He'll just go on and on and on. You got to land that plane for him. He's he's a that's a car salesman white man right there. Yeah, yeah, you know. But he said, and people have said I should run. Um, no, no, because here's the problem: if I ran for some type of a elective office, I would probably win, and that would be the problem. I would probably win and they would kill me the next day. They would kill me in a big 
dramatic fashion. Yeah, they would kill me so quickly. I'm telling you, they would make it so dramatic. They would do something like get T.S. Giselle to stick some bombs in his bussy and then run up and do a suicide bombing on my ass. They would just make it real over the top to get me out of here. They would just be so over the top. And no, I'm not going to do that at all. I'm not doing that whatsoever. I'm not going to have T.S. Giselle suicide bomb me. <laughs> Where you at, T.S. Giselle? <laughs> I'm not going to have it. Yeah, that's, that's not going to happen. Hop on, T.S. Giselle. I'm going to let you get your... I know I had to tap you one time. Hop on, T.S. Giselle. <laughs> Don't come for me unless I send for you, okay? You, you $5 Montel Jordan-ass nigga. Don't do that, okay? <laughs> I can roast just like you, okay? That's the best you got, you $5 Montel Jordan. Are those Cartier shades real? I know Cartier oh, because you know, the men that I run with, you know, they make more money than you do. I know Cartier. I know. There you okay? go. All right. Period. All right. Now let then, me go to bed. I, have, I was fair. I'm going to let you get yours off. I, I had to tap you one time. I'll let you get yours off. All right. All right. Let me... <laughs> all right let me get some more people in here all right let me see who else we got and by the way have y'all seen the trailer for the new film by the way i hope you guys have seen the trailer for the new film people love the trailer for the new film american maroon that we're working on now if you have not seen it look at my pinned tweet some people were asking when they saw the trail, I saw some people in the comment. They were like, man, Tariq, how do you get these white dudes to get in your movies and take L's? Because in my movie, they be getting the business. They get the business. You know, because we, we, we showing real history. They're like, man, how do you get these white actors to show up and take L's in your movie? <laughs> and here's the thing. Let me tell you how we get a lot of people. What we do when we put out the casting calls. You know how to get a bunch of people in the dominant society? Just say you're doing a slave movie. We're doing a movie about slavery. And we need people to play slave owners. Do you know we got flooded with, with castings? <laughs> That's all you got to say. Nigga, we got flooded with castings. Oh, the motherfuckers were sending headshots by the thousands. Just say we need some... That's all we had to do. They say we, we got a slave movie we're doing and we need somebody to play slave owners. Boy, we got headshots left and right. Out of all the other characters, we, we you know, we had other characters. We need people to play slaves and we need people to play. We got moderate, you know, um, um, submissions. But for the slave owners, oh, my God, we we got way more than enough. Trust me. Now, what they don't know is that the slave owners, is they're going to get their ass killed in the movie. We don't tell them that until they get there. <laughs> yeah, you're going to be a slave owner, but the, the people are going to get revenge on your ass. But I told people when we were filming, oh, they, they are so ready. When we were filming this movie, we were like doing the scenes and we had costume and I had wardrobe people. We had a wardrobe trailer with a whole bunch of wardrobe folks and we had props and um, I had some of my, my set designers go to the um, toy store in Hollywood. There's a toy store on Hollywood Boulevard where they can get prop knives and prop uh, whips and all that. And we had a whip and we had a scene where um, one of the, the white slave owners was whipping one of the slaves and the whip was kind of flimsy. And we were trying to decide, you know, we we're trying to, I was talking to my um, assistant, like, what do we need to do to make this whip look good? And the white dude who was playing the slave owner, he's like, hey, I got a whip in my trunk. We can use my whip. I'm like, okay. All righty. Like, you just happen to have a whip in your trunk? Okay. Okay. So these people are already into that type of shit. They are already into slave play. They... They're already into stuff, so it's it's an interesting dynamic. So some of them brought some of their own slave owner clothes. They would bring some of the, they got old, some of them just happened to have old vintage clothes from the 1800s. So I'm like, okay, what do y'all people be into? So yeah, it's not as hard as you think. 
to get people to be in these movies taking L's. It's really not hard. But it's acting. It's acting. You know, it's 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 acting. So so yeah, in 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 my movies, especially this movie, you know, we we tell a true story and the true story is the Black Maroons who were the Gullah Geechees and the Seminoles and many others, they were down there in Florida and other parts of the country giving these white supremacists the business. And that's the story that has not been told, and we're breaking that down. Let me get my brother Nas Esco in here. What's up, brother Nas? How how you doing, fam? What's going on, Tariq? And what's going on, y'all? Um, um, we good, man. How are you? What's on your oh, mind, I'm sir? I'm doing good. First, I got to say, man, you know that, that trailer for that movie, man, that thing cracked me up, man, because, you know, you watch it and you see that owl, and then you see them boys doing that little silly dance, and the next thing you know, that shit went to hell real quick for them white folks. I said, and then, yes, the, and then the owl got the hell up out of there. And, I, yes. <laughs> I said, I, I, and what's cold, people were like, they said the owl looked like Roland. Oh. Y'all very petty for saying that Roland the owl looks like Roland. That is petty. I, I we will not let y'all disrespect Roland like that. But go ahead, incredible. Brother. You know what I wanted to say? Um, you know the Democrats obviously they're going to keep. I mean the tricks. I mean the tricks are getting almost insane. It's like what they've decided is that okay? We're losing them. So what we're going to do is plaster all these stories about how we losing them, and you start reading the stories. And it's a setup in every damn article. It's like it's, you know how they do. They go get some black person to say, oh, you know, whatever, you know, how, you know, voting rights. That's what we care about, voting rights. I mean, even though we voted for y'all last year, we care about voting rights again. And, you know, so it's just kind of crazy with them. So forget what they're doing. What I wanted to say and the reason I even decided to come up was, uh, you know, right now we're in the final push for Marcel. And yeah. You know, I, you know, even though I think we all have a good feeling that he has a great chance of winning, uh, there's something inside of me, and I think all black people are like, we ain't gonna leave nothing to chance, you know. So we gonna push him over the finish line as hard as we can, and so we decided that we're gonna do phone banking every day until the election day. Election, oh, cool. election day is June 14th, and uh, the first day of early voting in South Carolina for the primary is tomorrow which is uh, May 31st. Yeah, May 31st. Okay. And okay. we're going to do a full day of phone banking tomorrow, meaning we're going to have, you know, two hour shifts all throughout the day. And so I'm I, you know, so I wanted to get on here and hope that I could motivate a few people, you know, five, 10, you know, whatever that's going to get. I mean, we need as many as we can. But, you know, I mean, you know, I'll take a dedicated 10 over, you know, 20 people who don't really want to do anything or they kind of do five minutes or whatever. We need people to do 30 minutes or an hour or two hours, whatever you can handle, because, you know, not everybody's cut out for having that positive energy and being on, you know, when you talk right. to the strangers. But I'll tell you this, you know, we we talk to all kinds of people in South Carolina, white people, black people. And I tell you, them white people, man, you know, once you tell them, he try, he's going to get Clyburn out of there, boy. They perk up. They said, we, we're there, buddy. We are there. You know? Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. They ready because people want to change, you know. But what I would say is that, like I said, um, reach out to me or Alexis um, or uh, about the uh, phone banking. You know, I'll make a tweet tomorrow with the hours. And like I said, we and all the people in here now, let me check on my people in here now. Um, my family in here now, there's over a thousand people. If we got some people who can volunteer to do some phone banking just for a, few, a couple of hours tomorrow and work with my brother Naj, can you raise your hand, please? Let me see some people in here who can just volunteer a little time to do some phone banking. Can you raise your hand? Let me see a hand, please. Okay, we got we got a few people. We got a few people. Okay, I need you guys to look at Naj's profile here. I want you to follow my brother. Hit my brother up. Follow him. T.S. Giselle, put your hand down. We don't want you calling nobody. But um, um, Nas, y'all follow my brother Nas. Um, yeah, we don't want T.S. Giselle because her voice is too husky. It will scare some of the voters. But Nas, I want y'all to follow my brother Nas. If you can do some phone banking, follow him and get with him so he can put you up on game tomorrow so you can uh, make this happen. We need some people who are dedicated who can volunteer. So thank you so much, brother Nas. Man, I appreciate you, fam. Yes, we got to get our brother. We got to get our brother over the top. We got to get our brother Marcel popping. And that would be great to get the family to chop it up. 
All right. Let's get a couple of more people in here. What's up, Black Voltron? Shout out to Black Voltron. Black Voltron be giving them hell in these rooms. All right, let me get let me get black. I know you don't want to get on black, but let me get black on here real quick just to shout black out. He's one of the riders. This brother stays on these folks neck. Where you at, black? Black might not want to chop it up. Oh, there you go. Uh, there he is. What's up, black? Hey, good evening. Big B wants to blue to you, uh, Tariq. Appreciate it, bro. No doubt, man. How you doing, fam? Man, just uh, just coming off another uh, Twitter space and stuff, giving uh, somebody that work. Uh, there's supposed to be a alleged uh, uh, reparations candidate here in California, and uh, he just got vetted by us. And uh, um, brother Harry Tubman Pistols uh, uh, um, Twitter space, and I just want to say, man, we got to extremely vet these, uh, you know, these Twitter spaces, brother Marcel. He's been up and down these Twitter sp spaces, sp uh, streets, new black media on your channel. And just, you know, he's put in that work. You know, he's dedicated. He has that work ethic and he has the message down. If nobody else yeah. is talking like Marcel, it, it's either live or Memorex. Either he's real or fake like Alexander O'Neill, man. He, he got to go. Yeah. yeah. They got to go. Yes. Okay. Yes, indeed, man. I appreciate, appreciate you, man. It. Thank you for the call, brother. No doubt. Shout out to Black Voltron. Y'all need, need to be following that, brother. There's a lot of folks in here y'all need to be following. Y'all got to follow Black Voltron. Y'all need to follow Nas. Y'all need to follow Teslin. Y'all got to follow Wani. A lot of wonderful people you need to be following in here. And um, let me see. Let me, let's get Cherie, Cherie DC. Let's get Cherie DC in here. All right, Sheree. What's up, Sheree? Tariq, yo, I really wish that you were in that space earlier with the brother Dion because he stepped in a cow pie pile of bullshit earlier. Oh, oh my God. Tariq, he really tried to come for Marcel. He really tried. I heard. Oh, my God. And, and, and the thing that I tried to really impress upon him is that I'm a reparationist, okay? Look, I've been holding spaces with the AB3121 task force. Like, literally, I can make an argument for reparations with anybody. I don't care who you are or what your ideals are. I can make a case for reparations. And this brother could not because he was so honed in on one really narrow-minded issue which was right. being homosexual. Like, yo, I've met Marcel in real life, okay, last year. And I, I was one of the first people. I'm going to throw that shit out here because I know Marcel is going many places. I was one of the first people to give this man, like, space and, and, and talk to him. I made a, I have a club on Clubhouse, Millennial Reparationist, where we sat down with Marcel for hours, Tariq, for hours. And Marcel was open to that. OK, he sat yeah. there and he answered questions. He was ready. Nobody had to coach him. Nobody had to step in and deflect for him. He was there and he represented and he has literally stood 10 toes down since that day. Yeah. Up until now. And the thing that yes, I was indeed. trying to impress upon this brother is that, like, you don't have to try to change someone's core beliefs in order to 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 represent us as a collective and that's what he was missing is that he wanted everybody to say oh no i'm against gays i don't care about gays okay i care about right. black americans i care about foundational black american people and that's what he was losing and so i just hope that he learned something from this this in engagement because the grassroots are not playing we are here yeah and we're showing up over and over yes, and we're not going anywhere okay Yes. And so, yes, ma yes. Thank you so much, beloved. That's Cherie. Shout out to her. That's Sister Solid. Let's get um, Zim. Uh, what's your name, brother? Um, Des Dissident One? Oh, yeah, that's me. Uh, yeah, that's, I just kind of made up a random name. It's Tim Pock. But, um, yeah, I, that was really good. That premiere you you had, that was really cool. The uh, When they were dancing and all that, I really liked that a lot. Um 
and I'm really Wait, super... now where you from? Now where you from, brother? Oh, oh, oh! Uh, I'm originally from New York, but I'm I'm calling in from New Mexico right now, so not a lot of FBAs around me. But I'm I'm half black, so yeah. Oh, so you're black and what? Black and white. Black and white. Okay, okay. So, um, so how do you feel about reparations? Oh, I'm 100 percent for reparations. I don't have any argument against that at all. Cool. I've been cool. I've been I've been pushing it. I haven't. I admittedly I haven't been pushing it. Uh, for very long, but I started pushing it basically, you know, about three years ago, four years ago, about that's right when I started. But most of the time, I've just been railing on white supremacy as a whole, just calling them terrorists, that sort of thing. No um, doubt, no doubt, no doubt. All right, but thank you for the call, brother. All right, let me get um, let me get built solid, built solid. What's up, built solid? No, built solid. Where you at? What's up, Bill? Can you hear me? All right. What's up, Bill Solid? Hey, how you doing? What's up, bro? Where you from, man? Atlanta. There you go. What's on your mind, sir? Yes. Uh, when Biden and the Democrats got in office, did they have the Senate and House? Did they? Because that's, that's the main excuse they got going around. Well, we didn't have the full House control of the House. There's two rogue senators, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, like sick of the excuses. Right, right. They they got control of all of that stuff, and they, they they got every excuse in the world to not do anything for us. And we're just we're not listening to any more excuses. We're not trying to hear none of it, um, Mister. What's the um, code black? I just say code black because he has some strange letters okay, up there. Okay, so, hi, um, sorry, I'm from the UK. As you can see from that, what's up, bro? I'm cool, man. Um, I love that trailer for your new movie. It's very good, definitely, man. And yes, yeah, the um, FBA reparation stuff is fantastic. I think it's a really good thing, you know, and the universe bends towards justice. I think a justice claim is an important thing, I think. But some of the, the wars between um, different peoples is, 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 is not problematic in a, in a sense. You know, shouldn't we, shouldn't, Africans should be for, for reparations for FBAs too, and there shouldn't be no drama between that. But why is there sort of conflicts between p- different peoples? Well, there's conflict because you have a lot of people who are not FBA who come over and not only do they not really assist us or act as reinforcement for us, a lot of times they come over and deliberately try to undermine us. And when we start talking about reparations, you have a bunch of non-FBA people jumping into the conversations talking against it. So, yeah. That's going to be a problem, and that mentality is a problem because that doesn't it just doesn't start with reparations. We as foundational Black Americans, we're noticing that a lot of these folks are coming over here and deliberately doing little sucker shit to undermine us. We don't go over there to Africa, nor do we go to the Caribbean to undermine the people at all. So this one-sided um, sabotage thing that's happening. We're calling it out, and we just can't have that. And people try to shame us for calling out a lot of the off-code behavior from a lot of people from the diaspora. Definitely. And, no off-code behavior should be taken, but there are people that are, you know, um, respect, that are non-FBA, that respect what you lot are doing. Of so course. We talk about that more than the hate and the ritual, the back and forth. Because reparations, like I said, it is a justice claim, so there's nothing that should stand against justice. So all these sort of small arguments should just we've we all away with the wind, shouldn't they? No, they're they're very valid. No, they're they're valid arguments, and this is the good thing. We don't put everybody from the diaspora under the same banner. The thing is, they're not going to get a pass just because they're black, because we don't give our coons passes. We got coons who are FBA like Jesse Lee Peterson. I've given that man a coon train award to his face. All right. We call out coons. Nobody's going to get a coon pass. You're going to get called out. Herschel Walker's son is always in this room. I'm always clowning him about his dad being a coon. So we call out our coons. And coons from the diaspora, they got this thing where we can't call them out because we all black. No, your ass is a coon. You're getting called out. Definitely. Yeah, Definitely. That's, that, that, that's a good way. Right. But we should be concentrating on white supremacy more, isn't it? Sometimes we do tend to go at each other more 
than that. And if you just focus on specifically that. Uh, no, no, no. We're going to call out every form of sabotage and the white supremacists will send um, tethers and, and sambos to undermine us. And we need to focus on them, too, because that's another trick. A lot of the coons will come over here and do things to undermine us. And when we say, hey, man, what are you doing? You're undermining me. No, no, no. Look at the white supremacists. Don't look at me. No, I'm looking at your ass, too. I can. I got two eyes. I can look at two things. So off code behavior from people who are supposed to be riding with us, that's going to be looked at and called out. We got to call all of it out as we still go after white supremacy. That's a given. We're always going to be after white supremacy and fighting and trying to replace that. But white supremacy is sophisticated. It's a chess game. You have to watch every piece on that chessboard. You don't watch the king and queen. You got to watch the rook, the pawn, and the other pieces. Definitely, but, we, we, but make it, making links across the diaspora is also important, isn't it? I think sometimes people just dismiss that. It's good to make those links as well. Sometimes yeah. we just talk about, we, we, we go into our own silos and don't talk about making these links. It's important. Right. And we've been waiting on the brothers and sisters over there in the diaspora to make those links and make those. But that's quite that's a bit unfair, isn't it, Tariq? It's a little bit unfair. You know the history of what's going on in the, in in aspects of Africa. We need that that it's 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 difficult as well, isn't it? We need to think of ways of dealing with it. Some of these questions you ask towards the diaspora are good questions, and we should we should have that dialogue. Right. That that, that good dialogue. You're talking about land allocation. I agree with that. I live in the UK. <laughs> I want some land from Africa too, so I definitely agree with that. There's a, there's a personal. Why is it so hard? Why is it so hard? Why is it so hard? Because you know the way the countries were made up. The new countries were made by, as you know, the Berlin Conference and stuff like that. With the, they have those ethnic issues and they haven't been resolved. These these are relatively new countries, like you said. Actually, it's true. When um, uh, um, FBAs were taken from Africa, so the, the problem is them. So, again, this is what we're saying. The problem is them not getting on. They don't even have a code with each other. No, so but yeah, yeah, you're right. Right? We're That's the right. problem. Yes, yeah, you're right. But white supremacy affects people in different ways, isn't it? The uh -huh. way it affects itself in the United States is different as it expresses itself in Africa and the Caribbean. It's slightly different, isn't it? We have to understand that. It's slightly different. Yeah, it's different. And we get the brunt of it. And we're the minority over here. And we yes. still stand up to it. And we still get on code. Over there, they are the majority and they are off code as hell. And that is a True. problem. But, but, but they've been manipulated. These countries are artificial countries. They're not real like, they're not real countries. Like Nigeria was made in 1914 by okay. Lagarde. Come on, man. And like, you know, putting that together. We have to understand these things. We have to contextualize. Sir, America is, America is only 200 years old. You, you understand what I'm saying? America is a relatively new country. A lot of countries in Africa are new, ain't they? And they are artificial as well. They don't take they don't take the um, the ethnic issues in mind. But the countries all, even today, all countries are artificial to a certain degree. You you make them up. Countries and territories are always made up. Somebody goes somewhere and decides, okay, this is going to be our new country. All countries are made up to a certain not necessarily not not like in Africa and some parts of the um you know um, the colonies. Not necessarily they weren't made the same way because you'd have ethnic ethnic groups in different countries and the lines going through them. That's what you have in Africa. That is still an issue. We have to be honest about that. Isn't it? not, I'm not saying it's right or making an excuse. That's something different, but we have it's to contextualize the difference. It's, it's, it's the same white supremacy we're dealing with. It's white supremacy. That's all it is. Yes, it's, but in different ways. But it manifests itself in different ways. You, it, 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 it does. It, no, it doesn't. It's the same. It it's white supremacy, sir. It's white nomination over black people. That's all. Yes, but it's in different ways. They've how created so? countries, so? isn't it? So how, how so? So, so uh, the countries that are made are artificial. So they have to get they have to get rid of these boundaries and create new ones. That's what it will take for things to change, really, wouldn't it? So that is quite a challenge to some degree. And we have to just but acknowledge white, where things are. That's what I'm saying. But the white supremacists don't have no boundaries. They can go to any African country and do anything they want. They can go yes. to any Asian country and do it. They don't have boundaries. So that's not true. I don't buy no, that. No, 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 no. I'm saying the boundaries the white in the country. The white supremacists can walk anywhere over there in Africa and do whatever yes. they want to damn do. So yes. the boundaries are for black people, which is segregation yes. and white supremacy. We deal with that here. Yes, Come but on. it's different. It manifests itself it ain't differently. Diff okay, thank you, brother. God damn. Okay. It's the same white supremacy. People try to make it 
okay, I don't want to hear the brother say it. It's different. It is different. No, it's not different. It's the same white supremacy, brother. No, don't. It's not some kind of special white supremacy. Shout out to my brother Macau. Yeah, it's not no special white supremacy that's somehow different. No, that's y'all out. Y'all trying to use that as an out. No, we can't get on code because the special white supremacy. Dude, we are in the belly of the beast. We're right next door to the damn white supremacists. And they have their military arms trained right on us every single day. We get ambushed by them every day. We're in the belly of this damn beast. There is no special type of white supremacy. It's all the same white supremacy. But no, it's artificial. It's an artificial boundary. No, it's notaric. You don't understand it. It's, it's artificial. There's lines drawn within the diaspora. The countries are so young. It is a different form of white supremacy. You don't understand it. It's, a, it's, from, it's a Wakanda style white supremacy. You don't understand it. No, nigga, no, it's white supremacy, dude. We're dealing with it here. He's trying to make it all sophisticated. No, nigga, it is not sophisticated. It is not different. It is not special. It is not unique. You're not dealing with anything that's unique. It's white supremacy. That simple. No, no, Tarek, you don't understand. It was the Berlin Conference. There was the Berlin Conference, and then there was a Mary Kay meeting, and then there was a Ku Klux Klan colonialism type of deal. You don't understand, Tarek. It's a very unique form of white supremacy that is so much different than you Negroes over there that we must deal with. It's way more sophisticated. No, brother. Stop it. You're dealing with the same white supremacy we're dealing with. We just happen to get on code and there's something in our spirit that makes us fight these bitches to the death. And y'all ain't over there fighting them. That's what it is. It ain't sophisticated. They try to come up and rationalize niggas being cowards. I hate to go there. I love my brothers and sisters over there. But when the white folks and the Asians show up, niggas start bowing down. And instead of saying, hey, we're, we're scared of these people and we're the majority and we look like bitches. It ain't us looking like bitches. It's a sophisticated form of white supremacy. It's from another planet. They brought it over from Mars. They landed their space rovers over here in Nigeria and Ghana, and they're inflicting um, telegalactic white supremacy. It's from another planet. You don't understand. They have laser beams in and Wookiees and R two D two. It's Star Wars over here. You don't understand, Tyreek. Stop, man. <sighs> Y'all getting punked and you're the majority. That's what it is. It is not sophisticated. Y'all over there, you're the majority. The white supremacists come in there and do whatever they want. They bitch everybody out. And that's what it is. And niggas don't want to get on code. Because y'all know if y'all got us over there, we clean that shit up. If y'all start allocating some land for foundational black Americans, a lot of that will stop. And y'all know it. Because y'all see how we get down over here. We don't really back down over here. And these people got to go around ambushing us. See, in order for them to get a leg up on us, foundational black Americans, they got to sneak us. They got to run in our house when we sleep. They got to attack women. They got to run in grocery stores and shoot a bunch of elderly folks. They got to sneak us because we with the business. Over there in the diaspora, let's be clear. I've seen videos where Man, the Asian folks over there hitting people with switches and sticks. And there's a club over there in Kenya, a club that don't even let black folks in, in at certain times. They got segregated clubs in Kenya and it's a gazillion Negroes over there. And whites and Asians and East Indians get to go in and get VIP treatment while niggas got to sit out there on the sidelines in your own country. No, man. No. That's not how we roll, man. No disrespect to my brethren over there in the diaspora, but please don't try to rationalize some of the, the goofball stuff that goes on over there and try to make it seem like the white supremacy is way more sophisticated and different. It's a different form, Tariq. Yes, it's white supremacy, but it's so, so different. 
No, no, it's not like regular segregation. It is so different. This this white supremacy involves kryptonite and vibranium. It's so unique. Oh, stop, man. Stop that, man. Come on. Oh, brother. Okay. Let me get, <laughs> uh, let me get um JK in here. All right, JK. Let's get JK in here. JK, what's up, man? What's up, massive? Big up FBA Zimbabwe, massive over here, supporting you every time. Up to Zimbabwe. Every time, my man. Every time, every time. You know what? I hear these people. I see the British man just come over there, try and pour water over the movement. We, as black people here in Africa, over here in Zimbabwe, all over, we're looking at the FBA movement and we're taking inspiration. You're leading the way for black people. You're rising up against white supremacy. White supremacy knows no border is the same white supremacy. White capital knows no border is the same white capital. The oppression of black people is the same and is perpetrated by the same few individuals across the world. Those who then turn around and look down on FBI is because they live in Kushti. It's because they got their little pad, their little apartment here. They got their little something, something. They got their one out of their 40 acres. So they're okay to whine and dine with the what with the beast we're not black people who we'll always stand up remember you have our support fba and you're leading the way for us black people over here in africa in zimbabwe enough love enough respect every time every time my brother that's what i'm saying we got love man i love some of my riders over there in Africa, Zimbabwe, I've been over there, fell in love with the people in Zimbabwe. I papered up a lot of folks over there. There were some sisters out there who had farms. I was giving them bands, man, thousands of dollars to help our brothers. They, they showed me so much love in Zimbabwe. I don't want to hear nobody say that we're xenophobic. When I see brothers and sisters building, especially in the diaspora, I'm right there with your ass. If you're building and you're fighting against white supremacy and you have a lot of brothers and sisters in Zimbabwe and in South Africa who are fighting against white supremacy because they had to deal with it firsthand. So they go in on white supremacy and I rock with them heavy, heavy. But what I won't rock with is when you got people from other parts of the motherland who come over here and then start trying to find them a damn zaddy and, and, and try to find some white folks to lay up under and then start pointing their finger at us trying to undermine us. Now, that's not going to happen. You know, we, we're well within our rights to call all of that out. And that ain't showing vitriol and hatred. That's stopping vitriol and hatred from people coming, trying to undermine us. Like that white woman called up earlier, they, when we defend ourselves, we're looked at as the aggressor. That's that white supremacist mentality where we, Foundation of Black Americans, we're never supposed to defend our damn selves. Damn that. This whole narrative where we can't check folks from for undermining us, we can't protect our communities, we can't protect our neighborhoods, and we can't protect our resources. We're not supposed to protect our physical being from nobody. We're supposed to just sit here, get beat up, get shot up, let people eat off us, let people flood our communities with, with all types of drugs or whatever, and we're supposed to sit here under the banner of unity. Damn that. Damn that. And if we don't go for it, then we're supposed to be xenophobic and hatred and, and hateful. No, we're not going to let nobody shame us. We're not letting anybody shame us. We're looking out for our group. We look out for other people by extension once we get ourselves together. But it's black first and foundational black American first. We have to look out for our group first. That's the only obligation we have. We don't have any other damn obligation and don't let nobody shame you. We don't have to sit up here and put the capes on for all of these groups coming over here flooding our neighborhoods and eating off of all of these quote unquote minority programs that our families got their heads bashed in to create. We're not obligated to pull up a dinner table for everybody. We're not obligated to do that. I want Foundation of Black Americans to understand that, and I want non-FBA people to respect that. If you're non-FBA, y'all need to respect that because you don't let us go to your country and start 
house and everything and telling you what we going to get and you ain't going to do nothing about it. and nothing. Y'all don't let that happen. And we don't want to let that happen. We, any relationship we have is going to be an amicable, reciprocal relationship. All right. Should I get one more? Because I, I got work to do. I'm still, we're still editing this film. I'm still working on this film, and we're still editing this film. Let me get on up, Heidi. I'll be on here all night talking to the family, man. But much respect to you guys, man. Um, go to my um, um, Twitter profile. Go to my profile. Click my, my picture here. Y'all see my pin tweet? Go check out the trailer for the new film, man. You guys are going to love it if you have not seen it. We got a Kickstarter page up. Um, support the Kickstarter page so we can make this movie pop off, and you can get your name in the movie, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be a history make history making film you guys are going to love it um the first look trailer already has a lot of people hyped up and that's just the first look trailer man wait till you see this whole thing it is a deep deep educational film and a much needed film and we have to start showing our children that we as foundation of black americans and as black people we did not always sit up here and let these white supremacists abuse us we have to start creating narratives and educational pieces that show the truth about how we got down. We were not running around here singing and forgiven like these Sambos and Mammies out here. There were black people who had heart and who still have heart and black people who were standing up for themselves, fighting for their own damn freedom. And that story has always been buried. Our children need to know this. There's a reason why they like to push slave movies where there's always a white savior. Ain't no white savior in this damn movie. And it's a real story. It's not a fantasy movie like Django. They'll give you a Django because it's a cartoon to a certain degree. This movie that we're doing, all the shit really happened in it. And it's all verified. It's all documented. And this is something that will inspire our children to say, hey, man, I don't have to be no damn punk when it comes to going against injustice. That's the kind of energy we need to be given to our children. And we as black people have to take control of the narrative because the school system ain't going to do it. The school system is going to tell you Bayard Rustin is a damn hero. You know, you know what I'm saying? They're doing that type of stuff. They're going to start trying to push moisture on our goddamn kids in school. They're not trying to empower them at all. They're going out of their way to disempower them. We have to counter that stuff, family. And that's what we're doing now. But much respect to the family, man. I appreciate everybody for coming in here, chopping up game with me tonight, man. Much respect to you guys, man. And Papiakute and Lilavuve to the family. Y'all be good.